This is a rhino midden and a freshly used rhino midden as well that's holding a few secrets for us to explore. So a bull rhino would have come up to this midden. They use latrine sites and this one looks to have been used for years because this bush over here is almost entirely covered by this mountain of dung. Bull rhino would have come in, he would have sniffed around here first just to make sure that another rhino isn't uh, scratching in his patch and uh, has the territory, basically any usurpers. He then would have walked past it and he would have stood with his backside facing this particular piece of dung and he would have started to defecate and kick at the same time. But because rhinos have got such a big belly, what happens when they bring their foot back is their toe digs into the, the ground and quite often they scrape from the dung pile, they scrape a double track of footprint leading away from the dung pile. So he would have scraped and kicked, scraped and kicked. And as you can see, all of this is fresh dung from last night. But what it did do for us, and this is actually why I wanted to show you this, is while he was scraping out of his dung pile, he unearthed a larvae of a beetle. And that beetle is now being attacked by a colony of slender ants. So just the simple fact, that a rhino has come and defecated on the road over here and in his dung pile has led to these slender ants having breakfast this morning. Let me see if I can show you what size the larvae is, how many thousands of times bigger this larvae is than this ant. Have a look at that. Now this larvae is subdued but look at this carpet of ants that has just fallen off. They are stinging ant. These ants can bite and they can sting. Like worm like this to a hard shelled dung beetle that flies around and sometimes have these most iridescent covers. So it takes a long time to build up that amount of energy before they will pupate and come out as a beetle. But just have a look at the mass of ants. Now I read something very interesting about ants in that um, when ants are small like this it is generally easier, less less energy sapping not to dismember their prey so they won't dismember their prey when they small like this what they will do is together they will pull this entire carcass to their lair pull it underground where they will then cut it up and feed it to their babies basically that's all that this is is just this whole mass of food will be fed to the young ants isn't that incredible and that it's less energy or it's, it's more energy efficient when they all work together like this to take it home in one piece than to chop it up into smaller pieces. Now, of course we have our attending robber fly. Have a look here at the point of my blade. Here is the robber flies and of course they enjoy hanging around ants and termite colonies like this, picking off hapless individuals and sucking them dry from their abdomen side, so sucking their guts out basically, leaving quite often the termites or the ants still alive but with no insides. Basically, no, it's, it's been disemboweled. These flies doing an important thing, I suppose, in controlling ant numbers as well. But I think these slender ants are going to be too much for even this fly. Have a look at him here hunting this colony. So while this rhinoceros has uncovered this grub, which is now providing breakfast for this ant, even then the ants are being preyed upon by these flies. It's a very, very intricate web. Here this fly is coming in again. No, let's see if he's coming in. I think these ants are a little bit too aggressive for this fly, you know. These flies are, are better suited to larger ant colonies, particular ants carrying egg cases, and then termites as well, termites moving from one place to another. I see these pirate flies definitely, definitely uh, predating on them. Oh, talking about flies today, the fly.